In today's lesson, we're going to have a look at how to determine the outstanding balance on a loan, as well as determining the last payment on a loan. The outstanding balance on a loan is a once-off amount that can be paid at any given moment to settle the loan or, put differently, to pay the loan in full. Let's have a look at an example. A loan of 1 million rand is paid back in monthly installments of 12,000 rand each. The interest rate on the loan is 12% per annum compounded monthly. The graph below shows a very important concept. Here, the monthly installment of 12,000 rand is broken up into two parts. The orange part shows you how much of that 12,000 rand is interest on the loan. And the blue part shows you how much of that monthly installment is capital that is paid off on the loan. So here you can see that when you start off repaying your loan, the biggest part of your monthly installment is interest. In month one, for example, 10,000 Rand of the 12,000 is interest and only the bottom 2,000 Rand goes to the repaying of your loan. So even though after one month you paid 12,000 Rand, your loan will only decrease with 2,000 Rand because the rest was interest that you paid the financial institution. As time goes by, however, the amount of your monthly payment that goes to the capital of the loan increases and the interest decreases. If we have a look at more or less the middle of your repayment period, we will see that 5,000 of your 12,000 now goes to the capital payment of the loan and the other 7,000 Rand will be interest. And as you move closer to the end of your repayment period, you will see that the biggest part of your installment will now be as capital on your loan and a small part will be interest. So when it comes to calculating the outstanding balance on a loan, you cannot simply take the value of your payments and subtract that from the original loan amount. Because here we've now seen that only a part of that installment goes to the repayment of the loan and the rest is interest. It is important to know that when there's only one amount that is receiving compound interest, we can work with our normal compound interest formula. When we want to determine the value of the account somewhere in the future, we are working forward on our timeline and then we want to calculate A and that means we will work with a positive exponent for the period. Sometimes, however, we will be working backwards on our timeline, determining the original value of the account and then we want to calculate P by dividing by the bracket. This can also be rewritten with a negative exponent. Then in grade 12, you now learned how to work with annuities. Annuities means they are equal regular payments and that means more than one amount. When you want to determine the accumulated value of all these payments with their interest somewhere in the future on the timeline, you will work with your future value formula. And when you want to work backwards on your timeline, determining the original or starting amount of an account, and this means removing all the interest that has accumulated over time, you will work with your present value formula. I'm now going to explain how to determine that outstanding balance using an example. Example 1. Kevin takes out a loan for 100 31,534 Rand. He pays back the loan in monthly installments of 3,000 Rand over six years, with the first payment being made one month after the granting of the loan. The interest rate is 18% per annum compounded monthly. The question is, determine the outstanding balance directly after the 20th payment. Kevin is repaying this loan over 6 years worth of months and that means over 72 months. He starts repaying this loan one month after the granting of the loan with his first payment of 3000 Rand. 
we need to determine the outstanding balance of the loan directly after he's made his 20th payment. There are two methods for determining the outstanding balance on a loan. I will show you both and I'm going to start off with the method that focuses on everything that has happened by the time he's made his 20th payment. Here the loan amount has grown for 20 months according to the interest rate but 20 payments have also been made. So to determine the outstanding balance on this loan after 20 payments, we need to start off determining the future value of the original loan amount. And we need to determine the future value of the 20 payments that he's made. And because those payments are made towards the payment of the loan, we can subtract these two values from each other to determine the outstanding balance after the 20 payments. To determine the future value of the loan amount, you need to realize that because it's only one amount, we can use our old compound interest formula. And in this formula, the interest rate will be 18% and it is compounded monthly. And this is for the first 20 months. And from this, we now need to subtract the future value of all the payments. And for this, we're going to use our future value formula. In this formula, the X or the payment amount is 3000 Rand. And here the interest is also 18% compounded monthly for the first 20 payments. This is then divided by that same interest rate that is compounded monthly. And if you now determine this value using your calculator, you will find that the outstanding balance after the 20 payments is 107,786 Rand and 23 cents. So even though after 20 payments, Kevin has paid 60,000 Rand, only about 23,700 Rand of that 60,000 Rand has gone to the capital payment of his loan. The second method to determine the outstanding balance on a loan is to focus on what is still left in the loan period. 20 of the 72 payments have already been made and that means 52 payments are left. We can now go and determine what each of these 52 payments were worth at T20 and this will do by removing the interest from each of those payments and determining the present value at T20. And this is why the second method for determining the outstanding balance is to focus on the payments that are still left and determining their present value. So here we're going to substitute into our present value formula. Our X value is still 3000 Rand and our interest is once again still the 18% compounded monthly. But here we are focusing on the payments that are left, so we have an exponent of 52. And this is once again divided by the interest rate of 18% compounded monthly. And this calculation will again give us the same outstanding balance of 107,786 Rand and 23 cents. So now we have two methods to determine the outstanding balance on a loan. And even though this second method is much quicker to use, it can only be used if you know exactly how many payments you are supposed to make. The first method can always be used. When the value of the repayment is determined by using your present value formula, all the payments will have the same value. If, however, your payment is fixed beforehand, your final payment will probably be a bit smaller than the rest. So, to determine this smaller final payment, you first have to determine the outstanding balance of the loan straight after the last full payment. And this amount will then grow with one period's interest before you make your final payment. Example 2. 
George has to repay a loan of 375,000 Rand. The interest rate is 14% per annum compounded monthly. He pays back 7,500 Rand per month. Question A. How many payments will George have to make? Because here we have received the present value of the loan, we are going to work with our present value formula. If we now go and substitute, we know that the present value is 375,000 Rand and the monthly payment is 7,500 Rand. We've also received the interest, which is 14% compounded monthly and the N value, the number of payments we want to calculate. This is all divided by the interest rate of 14% compounded monthly. And now to solve N, I'm going to start off by getting rid of the divided by I by multiplying with it on the left and then the 7,500 Rand that is multiplied to the bracket will be divided on the other side. That means that everything outside the first bracket is gone and I'm left with what was inside the bracket. Because this whole term is negative on the right, I'm going to go and add it on the left hand side and the left hand side term I will subtract on the right hand side. And when I now simplify my left and right hand side, I will see that I need to rewrite this exponential equation into its log form. In this form, the original base value is now the base of the log. This will give me a value of minus 75,477, which means that n will be equal to 75,477. And from this, we can say that there will be 76 payments. 75 of these payments will be full payments of 7,500 Rand and the last payment will be a bit smaller. Question B. What will his last payment be? We just determined that there will be 75 full payments and one last smaller payment. That means we need to determine the value of the 76th payment. We also know that we now need to determine the outstanding balance after the last full payment, which will be our 75th payment, and then add one month's interest. We have just determined that there should be 75,4770653 payments to repay this loan in full. And that is why I'm going to use the second method for outstanding balance, where I'm going to determine the present value of the payments, or in this case, fraction of a payment that is left after the full payments. So we are now going to determine the present value at T75. We know that the monthly payment is 7,500 Rand. Our interest rate is 14% compounded monthly, and we are focusing on, in this case, the fraction of a payment that is still left to be paid. This is then all divided by the interest rate that is compounded monthly. And this will give us an outstanding balance directly after the 75th payment of 3,547 Rand and 45 cents. This amount is now going to receive one month's interest because the final payment will only be made after the 76 month. And to determine this last payment, we are going to take the 3,547 Rand and 45 cents and add one month's interest of 14% compounded monthly. So the value of this last payment will be 3,588 Rand and 84 cents.